Welcome to the Legal Advice in Paradise podcast, brought to you by www.legaladviceinparadise.com. Even in one of the most beautiful places in the world, life can be litigious. On this podcast, the best and brightest legal minds gather to help you navigate your way through every legal question you may face. This program will help you know your rights, know what steps to take, and help you find the best legal representation, all in simple, easy to understand terms. And now, here's your host, Justine Gronwald. Aloha, and thank you for tuning in to our next podcast episode. Want to make sure you never miss an episode, as well as get tips on how to hire an attorney and be eligible for monthly prizes? It's easy. Just join our free membership called the Agent of Change Membership. Text your name and your email to area code 808-670-3400. Make sure you text back agree. And also, to check out our past episodes, just log in to www legal advice in paradise podcast.com now enjoy the next episode aloha aloha agents of change this is justine gronwald of legal advice in paradise welcome back to another episode i have with me today my honor and privilege to talk to tony tony garnisi is that how you say your name that's it because, you know, I <laughs> have hard time with names. Um, but before I, I go on, um, I just want to thank Green Energy Drink, the official energy drink of this show, because I am the podcast queen on the go. And um, today's episode is all about wrongful termination. And I will have an attorney on, if I haven't already, to talk about wrongful termination and employees. But what makes Tony so unique is that he's in the Army Reserve. And so he was, uh, he's gonna tell about, he's t- gonna talk about his story and how he was protected on the USERA, under the USERA Act, which is the Uniformed Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act. So he's gonna talk a little bit about how that came about for our armed services and uh, so I'm gonna let you take it from here Tony tell us a little bit about yourself well thanks for having me on today and I'm glad I have an opportunity to um, to share my story with uh, with everyone out there especially the veterans and uh, the service members that um, you know this is a really important topic for a lot of service members because it um, it protects them and gives them a sense of protection as an army reservist um, your life can be turned upside down at a moment's notice Mm -hmm. without any warning or anything all of a sudden sometimes you do know in advance that it's coming a a deployment is coming but many times um, uh, a national emergency could happen and you'll be deployed and it always is good that it has been good in the past that um, that our country has protected its service members since the Civil War um, with some form of reemployment rights that's good to have that in place for you Um, Mm -hmm. and uh, with my interview with uh, Charles Dejou, Duke Ayona and Elvin Ahu we do talk about how we have our freedoms and how that's possible is by our armed services and um, we're going to talk about your history in in the military Tony and also your career and how how you went out on deployment and what happened with your case of wrongful termination okay Well, I can summarize it fairly quickly. Um, I started in the Army Reserve and I enlisted in 1987. I was uh, greatly inspired by President Reagan to become a uh, service member. When I was a kid, I I used to always play Army, so I was always uh, wanted to be a warrior. So that was something I've always wanted. And And we thank uh, you for your service. Oh, thank you. Thanks for recognizing us. And so in 1988, 1987, I enlisted. I shipped in 1988 and I went to training. served in a medical unit uh, in pharmacy until I moved here to Hawaii in 2009 Um, and during that time I was deployed a total of four times Um, so I've been you know taken away from my family uh, uh, one time in 96 to Germany to replace the uh, soldiers that were going to Bosnia Mm. Um, I was uh, deployed again to Kosovo in 2003 and I was deployed again to Afghanistan in 2007 and then again in 2011. 
Wow. Yeah. So and, you've seen a lot of crazy stuff, craziness. Yeah. And, well, you know, it's tough. It's tough on reservists because, number one, you never know, like I said before, what's really going to happen. Um, and number two, it's, it's, we're very fortunate to have a Congress and a country that recognizes the sacrifices of our, of our soldiers. Um, there have been several um, reemployment acts that have happened over the years. Uh, there's even in the Civil War, service members were protected against uh, uh, being taken off the battlefield and, and sent to uh, prison or sent to trial. Okay, throughout time, World War One, World War Two, in 1940, there was an act that also said that soldiers that were deployed could come back and be in the same position, and they would also receive. Um, advancements and promotions as if they were in that position the whole time. Mm -hmm. It was tested in the Supreme Court decision in 1946 and it was held. So that part of it's really good and over time between the 1940s and today, 2014, there's been, United States has been involved in the Korean War, um, right. Vietnam War, um, Persian Gulf War One, and then on to our current right. skirmishes, Afghanistan and Iraq and, and each time um, service members have been protected by different levels, and they've continually gotten better. That's good. Yeah, over time. So mm -hmm. um, what had happened with me in my case was in uh, my deployment in 2008, um, I uh, worked for a pharmaceutical company, and everything here is online. Mm -hmm. So you know everything I talk about uh, has been documented. If you just Google my name, you'll find it in there. But okay. um, what had happened was I... Um, I was deployed in 2007, uh, served for a year in Afghanistan, came back, and I came back to a different manager. Mm -hmm. And at first, everything was good, and then we were just having some interpersonal problems and issues, I think, is what had happened. Um, can I interject here? Uh, prior to you uh, being deployed, uh, you were pretty much top salesperson for this pharmaceutical or you were meeting all your goals and beyond yes in I sales was. I was so you yeah. left in a really good way I left in a good position the company was really good they took good care of me while I was gone I got full medical benefits I I admire the company I, I made a long lasting a many long lasting relationships and friendships that I still have today mm -hmm. um, but when I came back to a different manager um, my numbers were still good I got back in the territory I worked the territory I was a pharmaceutical sales rep Oh, before we go further, how long were you gone? Oh, I think it was a total of 13 months. 13 whole months, yeah. okay. Yeah. So when I came back, um, started working again, got back in the territory, had new products, numbers started to rise, okay. I had really good numbers and um, there was just some interpersonal conflicts on how I did my business and how I managed my territory. And this is under the new management? Under the new manager. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a company change, it was a district change. It was a change at the local level. Okay. So in a pharmaceutical company, you'll have different hierarchies. The person on the street is the rep, myself, and then I would have a manager above me. That manager is the one that changed in 2008. I see. That I came home to a different one. So the company, as it turns out, didn't have a policy in place to deal with USERA and to deal with um, service members. Oh, okay. okay. And so that was one of the biggest problems is the company didn't really have a policy in place. So um, there was a lot of he said, she said, and then finally I, um, I, I think I was terminated. I'm pretty sure I was terminated on, a, like I said, he said, she said mm -hmm. kind of basis. And it was unfortunate because I was doing a lot of good things for the company and making progress with the company mm -hmm. and so but anybody any company anytime could fire somebody I mean service members have to remember that doesn't matter how good the company treats you it matters what happens when you get back oh. now under the USERA law you're protected for one year now this is what unfortunately the company didn't have a policy in place and they didn't know but for one year I could not be fired without cause mm. and that's where we got into a gray area so um, so how long had you been back um, and then you were fired? Yeah, um, it had been about uh, about eight months, I think. Wow, okay, yeah, so it was under the one year, definitely. Yeah, it was under the one year, yeah. Okay. I mean, I felt the pressure as soon as I came back. When ah. I started first working with the manager, um, she wasn't comfortable with the way I worked. Mm. So whatever it was, and I, I followed all the guidelines. I followed all the guidelines that need to be followed. I took a lot of initiative, um, but there was something in our interpersonal 
communication, interpersonal mm-hmm. problem that she didn't like. So, but, you know, she started going through the pathway and taking the steps to, to let me go. Mm-hmm. Um, my numbers at that same time, throughout the whole time I was working with the company after I got back were still rising. And I think my last numbers when I had left the company were about, I was like 120 to 140% of goal. Right, right. So, I read that in your, what you gave me. Yeah. So things were so well. So you were doing really well. Yes. Yeah, okay. But so, that isn't so the only criteria a company yeah. uses when they can fire somebody. They don't have to fire you just because... Uh, Personal clash, uh, personality clash. Well, I mean, or, we, usually, in a, usually in a sales organization, you're mm-hmm. going to be let go for... Um, underperformance? For underperformance, for, for not achieving your sales numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you're blatantly something's really wrong with the way you do your business now in pharmaceutical sales it's detailing so you have to communicate a specific message that is scripted Mm -hmm. Um, it has to be very strict and it cannot be deviated from Mm -hmm. okay which i did Um, but still there was some interpersonal communication with the uh with the manager which Mm -hmm. caused problems Mm -hmm. so um, i was let go and then i don't i didn't think i got a fair shake so I contacted an attorney, mm-hmm. and I, uh, you know, and and this didn't didn't uh, take place in Hawaii. It was in California, right? Yes. But USERA is, of course, it's a federal it's law. It's federal. Yeah, it's a federal yeah. law. So when looking for an attorney, um, did you shop around? Were you referred to an attorney, or how did you come about finding your attorney? You know, I really don't remember exactly how I found him. I, he might have been referred to me. Oh, okay. By somebody, okay. yeah. But he specialized in uh, labor law labor law so Mm -hmm. that's the important thing is if you do find somebody uh, if you do run into a problem you have to find a labor law attorney Mm -hmm. it has to be specific someone who's already done it well my attorney hadn't dealt with this specific type of case before oh but he was a labor law attorney so he Mm -hmm. knew labor law oh yeah so you know he did the research and he he fought for me and we worked everything out everything worked out just fine for i think both parties were happy where everything was settled that's good um so, do you know and of any other cases that uh, involved Usera, um, the Usera Act? Well, specifically, no, I don't. I don't mm-hmm. know any specific cases. Um, as I said before, throughout the '60s and '70s, there have been co- cases that have gone to the Supreme Court mm-hmm. um, that have been, and Usera, the Usera type of law, the Servicemen's uh, Adjustment Act, has been upheld. Okay, that's good. And you did mention that um, I asked you if the armed services if they're all briefed about the USERA and you said they are they are Um, whenever you get deployed you're giving an in brief okay and it could last usually it lasts um, several days okay Mm -hmm. so you would have certain classes you would take every day so USERA is one of the briefings that you get along with medical family care a lot of different briefs that Mm -hmm. a soldier has to go through before they actually get on a plane and leave the country Mm -hmm. yeah so you are briefed on USERA um, you refer to the ESRG, uh, ASGR, which is the um, Employer Support the Guard and Reserve, which is an organization which promotes um, service members mm-hmm. and their rights. Okay. Um, so also, also promotes uh, employers. So they do have awards for employers that oh. that do good things. So, uh, one That's glaring good. example is Home Depot. Mm-hmm. Home Depot takes the extra care for their employees. They really go. Um, out there for them and they, they they try to hire ex-veterans and they they will give you everything you can they can mm-hmm. to promote um, uh, National Guard and Reserve Service okay so um, why don't you uh, you know what are your thoughts to other military armed forces um, out there that might be facing this or what would you say from your experience you would kind of like give them advice on well uh, again, things as things as we go through time, things have changed again. In 2008, there's another law, uh, the SAJA, which is the uh, Service Members uh, Access to Judgment Act of 2008, didn't make it through Congress, but um, there is a pilot program. I believe it may or may not still be in place where service members can call the Department of Justice directly. Mm-hmm. That way, you don't have to go through the expense of hiring an attorney. I had to oh. actually come out of pocket, hire an attorney, and go through the steps. Um, so. A lot of service members may not be in that position when they mm-hmm. come back. Um, if you don't have the funds to hire an attorney, 
you may not be able to get representation. Okay. But there is an avenue for soldiers to contact the Department of Justice correctly is what I would recommend Department doing. of Justice, yeah. okay. Federal okay. Department of Justice. And uh, do you have any thoughts about, uh, in your wrongful termination case, um, they brought up the whole thing about at-will employee. What did you learn from that? Mm, as again, an it, at will well, when you're when you're in a uh, interpersonal situation and it and actually your termination comes down to the judgment of one person. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, in a large organization, it has to get signed off at different levels. Mm -hmm. But one person is going to say that particular salesperson is not qualified for these reasons, and they will list the reasons why. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you they will they will try to do if somebody doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. They will try to fire you. If they pay your salary and if they don't like you, they will look for a way to fire you. Mm -hmm. okay? In my personal opinion, um, they can do that. And employers have rights also. I mean, there mm -hmm. are people out there that are underperforming mm -hmm. or, a liability, or a liability to the company, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which, you know, if you're a liability to a company, you may be a big performer, but if you're a liability, maybe, you know, it, it, I see. it could be a problem for the company. So, right. um, but, you know... Uh, in my particular case, because of other things that have happened, mm -hmm. I think it was more personal. Okay. So, would you say justice was served in your in your case as a wrongful wrongful termination case? Uh, it, it was. I mean, I'm happy with the outcome somewhat. I mean, mm -hmm. could have been better. It might have been worse. It just depends. I mean, but right. um, as fate would have it, I think that um, the court system really encourages people to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, this is not a good fit. Okay, just like a marriage that's not good. Mm -hmm. Sit down, talk about it, say, Okay, you know, we gathered a lot of we, we had a lot of time together, things just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Let's find a way to, to make it so we both can split amicably. Right. So instead of going full blown. That's to the what the court. court really encourages. Mm -hmm. Instead of going before a jury trial before Right, uh, right, right. Because that is very costly and when you have a win-lose situation, somebody may lose and it may lose badly. So it, it does serve justice and serve everybody better mm -hmm. to you would know, you Would you negotiate. say as, as you came back, um, we had instantly that uh, personality clash with that new manager. Um, what would you advise to other people out there that if you feel you're ready to be terminated but you feel it's wrong, uh, would you feel that you should already be talking to an attorney or in hindsight do you think you would have asked for advice way ahead of time prior to yeah. the eight months unfortunately that finally unfortunately some people you know even though you're given the briefing younger soldiers don't know that they have rights mm -hmm. and maybe a young soldier might say oh, I don't care about that company I'm just gonna go find another job mm -hmm. well that might have been all well and good in 2005 or 2007 when the economy was still fairly good we're an economy right now which I don't think there are too many people, major companies hiring at this point. Mm -hmm. um, also for older veterans like myself, I'm in my 50s, I was in my late 40s at the time. Um, as you go over the age of 40, it becomes harder to be employed. Right, right. Um, especially in industry where, where looks and age are, are very important. Especially well, you're, you're a rep, right? You're right, out there right, right. talking to people every day. Right. Yeah. So in, in pharmaceutical though, I mean, you'll see, you know, they you you got to be young and attractive i i you know that stereotype is always out there so you take a guy like me who's you know i'm just okay but <laughs> okay. <laughs> and i'm not you know i'm not uh, uh the most gorgeous guy in the world i'm not the youngest guy in the world but i do have a lot of spirit and energy and i do get the job done and you i do make my set. numbers yeah yeah you i mean i know I, yeah when you you become mature you overcompensate what you don't have in beauty right. you have in brains so anyways um so yeah. you would you would advise no matter you know where you what stage you are in your career that you should keep your eyes and ears open if you feel any rumblings within well, the company I think or that every person should know their rights. I think it's very important for every soldier to know what their rights are. Mm -hmm. um, you should know when you're getting taken advantage of. You should know when things are not going well. Um, you should understand and, and, and what your would, rights are and what yeah. what you have to do. Um, I felt this coming and I knew what my rights were mm -hmm. and that was important for me and I did everything they said to do during a probationary time mm -hmm. but you know you you the person has to know what's going on and you have to and in my case I say just keep your options open okay um, don't get tied to one particular job or career or profession have other avenues keep mm -hmm. an open mind do other things um, 
like what I do today, I do a lot of different things. Um, mm -hmm. I believe in being um, here in Hawaii, it's a very small market. We have few contacts in my particular business now. I work in medical device sales and service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, c I represent a lot of different companies, and that's important to represent a lot of different companies. If one company falls off mm -hmm. for whatever reason, it could be a million different reasons, you're not tied to that one company. You, mm -hmm. You're diversified and you're, and you're your yeah, expand I, your whole you know your your opportunity i think that would go for everybody military or not in today's economy and you know yeah. uh, making a living and everything well i just think it's 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 a it's a prudent way to live your life it's not to to be dependent on any one thing mm -hmm, it's to mm -hmm. be diversified and to have other options okay so so thank you for uh uh, sharing your experience oh, because yeah. you know wrongful termination um, I myself went and did the full blown court and everything and I had five claims and uh, one of them was wrongful termination and uh, I I didn't win like Tony did so any of you that are, are you know feeling the rumblings within and you know you're a good performer um, but you just feel like you're ready to be booted um, <laughs> Your your advice, Tony, would be to to know your rights. Okay. Yeah, know to the know law. Your know your rights. Um, if you're not a good fit for that company, recognize it. Uh, don't make a company suffer. Mm, but mm -hmm. it goes both ways. It does yeah. because you may not be a good fit for that particular uh, industry or that company mm -hmm. for whatever mm -hmm. reason. There could be a lot of different reasons. Yeah. So, you know, take step back, take a hard look at it. Don't mm -hmm. make anybody suffer. Everybody mm -hmm. can win. Okay. Yeah. But the main thing is to know your rights. And also, as I'm doing this show, I also want to emphasize that frivolous cases, you know, we we don't need those either. No. You know, no. you need to There's a lot of people rights, that, that really do try to take advantage of the system. And yeah. I've seen that too. And yeah. And that's not right. No, it's not right. Yeah. So it's it not what the system is designed for. And that's what really hurts the good people in the system. Right, right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Oh, well, thanks for and, having me. Um, just a little history. Uh, Tony. Uh, invited me to HBN Network Luncheon and we kind of knew each other from Facebook and I owe it to him for introducing me to Charles Deju, which we have on the show and so um, I'm just so glad that we met yes, and for you to yes. be part of the podcast show well, thank you no I appreciate it I'm glad I could share my story and, and oh, we're, definitely. we're glad to have you with HBN HBN is a great organization that mm -hmm. promotes small business in Hawaii yeah so you know it's 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 a good fit for everybody especially you and I really believe in what you're doing. I think these oh, podcasts are very informative. Mm -hmm. And any type you, any time you can, you can bring um, legal knowledge to the community. That's really important. Yeah, because we just don't know any of this. You know, I talked to uh, uh, interview with Stephen, uh, Steve Gutman yesterday, bankruptcy, and uh, he even said it. You know, people don't know what they don't know. I mean, it's just simple yeah. as that. We don't go to school for this. Uh, life happens, um, and we don't know when we may need any kind of legal advice so um, I thank you again Tony okay and as we do in the video we shaka out and in the audio we I say right. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the audio we say aloha and ahui ho aloha ui ao. thank you for listening to the legal advice in paradise podcast for more information visit www.legaladviceinparadise.com